Notion is a really powerful tool that can help us organize our thoughts and create systems that really help us to live more productive and more purposeful lives. But in my experience, there's no tool out there that doesn't have its downsides and its traps. If you've watched The Social Dilemma recently or read anything about social media and its impacts on people's mental health, you'll understand that these tools, which were actually designed to help us feel more connected, have actually done the opposite, leading us to feel lonely and isolated. And I think the same can be said as well for productivity tools. These are tools that are designed to help us feel productive, to help us organize our lives but if we don't use them correctly I really think they can actually do the opposite and recently I've actually been noticing some quite challenging emotions and things arising from my use of Notion and other productivity tools things that started as ways to organize my life were becoming very rigid and I was feeling like it was almost governing how I led my life on a day-to-day -day basis. As well as this, I found that I was really procrastinating while using these tools, creating you know, the exact perfect template or system. So what I'm gonna try and do in this video is really break down some of the pitfalls and traps that I've noticed from my Notion use over the last three to six months and then just give you some really helpful strategies and practical tips that you can use to make sure that your interaction with Notion is just a purely positive experience without any of these downsides. I'll leave the timestamps here so you can jump around a bit if you want and if you want to be notified when I release new weekly videos on Notion and how you can use it to live a more productive life, uh, bang subscribe and you'll be notified of that. So one of the issues that I've found come up from my use of Notion recently is always being in this what I call always capture mindset. And what this means is like whenever I'm consuming any piece of content, I'm always ahead of myself thinking like, okay, how am I going to highlight this? How am I going to put this into my second brain? How am I going to digest it and make the most use out of it? And I really do think that having Notion as a second brain is a great thing to do and I've even made a whole video on why I think you know it's important that when you're reading books you're capturing all the information that you can, cementing your understanding and then learning from them. But when this becomes your modus operandi for 99% of your waking hours, it really just starts to take a bit of the fun out of life. Like I remember when I could just sit down and read a book for fun, listen to a podcast, do these kinds of things, consume this kind of content without feeling this constant need that I'm having to get every last morsel of information out of it. So recently what I've started to do to try and counter this always on, always capture mindset is to just set aside a bit of time each day where I'm reading either a hard copy version of a book or I'm just listening to a podcast while I'm cooking, doing something where I'm not necessarily in the position to be making notes and to be making highlights and just trusting that the good information is going to stick and just fundamentally trying to enjoy the process because man like life is just not about being productive all the time sometimes it's about just enjoying the moment and enjoying some content that you're consuming one of the second problems I've noticed arising from my use of Notion recently is the pursuit of efficiency over effectiveness. And just to give you a bit of an insight into what that means, imagine that you're hosting a dinner party and you look up all the best meals that you could possibly make. You make a short list and you find you know, the absolute best one. You've got a really nice steak dinner. You've got a starter of a pate and a really nice pudding that you're gonna put on. Then you make a list of all of the different ingredients. You map out exactly where you're gonna find them you go to the different shops and you come home and prepare the meal you make sure that all of the food that can be prepared the day before is prepared the day before and everything that needs to be prepared on the day is prepared on the day you serve up this meal to all your friends and you realize that at the last minute half of them are vegetarians now this is a classic example where you've been really efficient in making your meal and you know making a really great meal for everyone to enjoy but you've not been effective because you've not done the right thing you should have been preparing a vegetarian meal instead of a meal that was heavy in meat and this is really just like a roundabout way to explain how when we just focus on doing things and doing tasks rather than the bigger picture of what we're actually doing 
this can become a real problem. Now Notion makes it really easy to be efficient. You can create systems that are gonna allow you to, for example, create YouTube videos very quickly, for you to create a system of sharing all of your content online, for you to plan out different products that you're gonna be creating. And this is great, we all need systems in place that are gonna help us be efficient so that we can complete the work that we need to do. But I was finding that Notion was just making it so satisfying to be efficient that actually I was forgetting about the effectiveness and I was just focusing on checking off tasks, on moving tasks from you know one stage to the next and focusing completely on the output rather than the outcome of what I'm actually making. For me, I've really tried to get out of this efficiency mindset by just taking some time every week where I'm not interacting purely with digital tools. I'm going on a walk, maybe I'm taking a notepad and a pen with me, maybe I'm just sitting down and meditating, and instead of thinking on the tiny little details of the tasks that I need to do, I'm trying to think of the bigger picture and what is the outcome that I actually want from these tasks. And I found that that's just been really helpful to bring a bit of balance back so that Notion is helping me to be efficient, but my own time and my own ideas and my own brainstorming and big picture thinking is helping me to be effective. One mistake that I think I'm guilty of and I see a lot of my friends making as well is over-engineering their Notion systems. If you're new to Notion, you don't want to be going out and, you know, aping some really advanced systems out there that, you know, make use of roll-ups and formulas and all these different kinds of things. I think one of the benefits of such a wealth of content that's being created on Notion is it's really easy to get inspiration from other creators out there. But one of the drawbacks is if you're starting out and you're watching these really advanced tutorials, I think it's gonna do you more harm than good. What you wanna do is start off watching you know, beginner's tutorials, just get to know the basics of Notion before you move on to this really advanced systems that are being created out there. What you're probably not noticing when you see a really sophisticated system is the person who created it has probably just started out with something very simple to start with. Taking the example of a way to track your books, Probably what you're going to want to do when you first start out is literally just create a page that's a list of books that you want to read. Then if you start to feel like, right, okay, I want a way of better tracking where I am with these books, maybe you're going to introduce a board view. Then you might want to say, right, I want to know when I read them. Then you're going to you know, maybe put a year added date. Then you want to say, right, I want to get my quotes in there. Okay, let's look at some integrations where I can do that. But maybe it would be a mistake to start out with a really complicated system because it's ultimately just going to end up confusing you rather than making your life simpler and more productive. Creating something from the ground up and slowly, iteratively adding to it over time, you're not only gonna create something that you truly understand, but it's also gonna be something that really works for you and is solving the problems that you need to be solved, not the problems that someone else needs solved for them. I personally just recently reviewed my video creation process. I started by just aping uh, Thomas Franks, which is like an incredibly powerful system for, especially if you've got a team, to manage the whole video creation throughput. But there were so many features in there that I just wasn't using and were just becoming confusing for me. So I took some time, looked at it, and just stripped out all of the features that I wasn't using. And I think this is a great example of not just aping somebody else. Thomas Frank has got a two million subscriber YouTube channel. I've got 200. He's got a team of editors and you know content creators working for him. I'm a one-man army. Clearly the system that he creates is not necessarily going to be the best system for me. And I think it's just really important to keep in mind when you're thinking of any Notion system. Why am I creating this? What's the simplest way that I can start out? And then how can I over time iteratively build on that until I have something that I'm really pleased with? The final thing I wanna talk about is distraction. And this is, you know, par for the course for any digital tool, I think. And I actually always had this problem with Instagram and YouTube. You know, these were apps that I might go into to complete a task and I'd end up getting drawn into them. But it's only recently that I think it's become a bit of a problem for me for Notion. For example, if I'm listening to a podcast and I get a really good insight, I'll often go into Notion to just make that update, but then I'll see, oh wait, I haven't done my daily journal today. I'll just do that. Oh, let me see what I've got coming up this week on my weekly plan. Let me take a look at that. And I'll just get sucked into checking off boxes, you know, seeing where things are, rather than actually doing the work that I was intending to do. To counter this distraction, I've taken to now 
creating a weekly plan with Notion, but every day, rather than checking off the different tasks that I need to do on the weekly plan, I'm actually just writing out on sticky notes the tasks that I need to do and sticking them up on the wall. I find that this is really helpful because I just visually can see you know, where I am with everything, what's up next and what I should be working on, and I'm not getting distracted by having to go into Notion to check things off and then potentially being drawn into doing something else. One other thing that I do is if I have an insight or a business idea or something like this rather than straight away going into notion and logging that I actually just write them down in my sort of paper journal and then at the end of the day I upload everything into notion just in one batch and it stops me sort of constantly going in and out of the tool so that I can just get into a really nice flow state work what I'm working on and not have to fear getting distracted from my work so hopefully you found that helpful we've gone over a few different uh, traps that you might want to avoid while using Notion. I should mention that this is probably going to be for any productivity system that you use. I mean, I love Notion and I use it every day, but if you're using you know, OneNote or you know, Todoist or Evernote or whatever it might be, I'm sure that all of these different uh, traps are going to be prevalent in them as well. If you like this video, I'm going to leave a custom playlist here that you might want to check out with my Notion guides. You're probably going to enjoy them if you enjoyed this one because in all the videos, I also do try and go over different traps that you might want to avoid with the systems that I've created. So thanks a lot and have a great day.